We are here to talk about insight into the fast-growing, image-guided, minimally invasive surgery market and the future of some of the related technologies. And so to do that, I want to introduce you to uh, Bert Van Meurs, who is CEO of Image Guided Therapy at Philips. And, you know, this is really the first time in the U.S. where you, uh, Philips, and Volcano have been together since the acquisition, and the executives here are kind of getting together and enjoying company. When was the acquisition, first off, between you and Volcano? So the acquisition really was closed in February this year. So we're well into uh, over 200 days in this acquisition right now. And you're sharing space and you're still smiling, so everything must be okay. I'm very excited. Actually, you know, um, this, this has been a vision of Philips for many, many years already. Uh, we are known as an imaging company, uh, but more and more we want to offer our customers more integrated solutions. Uh, and therefore, uh, it is our vision that combining devices and imaging right. and make a much stronger solution there is, uh, is, is better for our customers. So an example? As an example, uh, um, today uh, you can uh, drive more efficiency in interventional procedures by adding intelligence to catheters, like Volcano has done. Uh, intravascular ultrasound, FFR measurement. Uh, that's still separate from what you can do to improve procedures with co-registration and acquisition of images, combining eco-images and, and x-ray images. Now we're basically combining these two worlds. Uh, as an example, integrating FFR in hemodynamic reporting or also co-registering that you know exactly which part of the angio image uh, you have the biggest pressure drop and that's where you should treat this patient. Nice. But that's just the start. I mean, towards the future, we are looking at new technologies that Philips also has in-house. Uh, to drive even more intelligent devices to further optimize these procedures. So in the next couple of years, what do you think the changes are going to be that will be most impressive and most helpful for the clinician? Well, there, there are a number Short of Short term, not long term. Short term, um, basically in the interventional lab itself, uh, there will be uh, new technologies that first of all, significantly reduce the X-ray dose because we're still talking about ionizing radiation. Absolutely. So it is really our objective to reduce it as much as possible. If you have smarter devices that can guide themselves and even image themselves, uh, you don't need a, a lot of excessive radiation. So that's, that's the first thing. Second is really to get more accurate sensing at the location of where you want to deliver the treatment uh, with, with new sensors that we are developing and therefore have better information to have a more definitive diagnosis so you have a more effective treatment. That's, that's short term. Long term? Yeah, that was the next, obviously. All right. So, so really it's our vision that now we're still looking at the cat lab itself as, as, a, as a single modality. Uh, you really need to look how you can optimize uh, the delivery of care across the health continuum. So taking care more of patients that go at home or e even before they enter into the cat lab in order to reduce overall cost of the uh, delivery of care. Now, anytime two organizations come together, there's some growing pains. Have you had any? Uh, do you, are you really happy with how this is working out? I'm, I'm, I'm very happy how this is working out because, it, it, like I said, this has been our long-term vision, uh, but also very well received on the Volcano side. So um, clearly there's strong endorsement of the Volcano leadership that this is also a good thing and a major opportunity for Volcano. And it's very complementary. There, there is no overlap in our organizations. And therefore, the teams really find each other, work well together, and we see a lot of uh, opportunities where we offer better solutions. Of course, there's always growing pain. So I would be lying if I say that there's none. Uh, Philips and Volcano, different size companies, so different cultures. And that's where you have to really pay attention that as Philips, we don't overwhelm Volcano say, now you do it the Philips way, right. because Volcano has been a very successful company in the last 12 years. Uh, we need to preserve that success, and we can learn a lot from Volcano, actually, on how we deliver uh, uh, solutions to our customers. That's the main, uh, one of the main reasons also for this acquisition. It's not just to add a portfolio. It is to learn from capabilities, how you have, are more intimate with your customers, how you run clinical trials, clinical studies, Philips doesn't have these capabilities, Volcano has. So it's, it's really a two-way uh, street. The last question has to do with, because of the changes in the healthcare uh, reimbursement in the United States, everybody is looking to save some money. Is the financial side of it in terms of keeping costs down high in, in your thought process as you're looking ahead into the future, 
how to how to make those things that will will save money and be very cost effective. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the overall objective uh, of everything we do. So in, in our vision, like I said, across the health continuum, sure. how can we deliver better care at a lower cost? So it's not only about developing the best technology for a single objective, but across that, if that technology can help for patients that uh, are treated more effectively and stay at home with less readmission, you save a lot of cost for the whole uh, uh, delivery of care. So that's, that's clearly uh, our future objective. Any technology presentations here using your technology that we need to talk about? Well, that, so one major development is, of course, physiological measurement. Uh, so there are many, many uh, sessions here, uh, uh, and also we've organized some of our advisory panels. But uh, this morning we had a breakfast symposium, which was very well uh, attended. So there's a lot of attention for how can physiological measurement help to uh, drive a better procedure. Uh, and you measure actually whether you should treat this patient or not. So with that, you have a more objective decision, and also you guide that, that procedure. Um, for because every patient is different uh, and depending on the patient situation with physiological measurement you now know whether you should put a stent and where you should put that stent which you cannot tell from NGO alone um, and that's, that's, a, that's a, a major discussion that's going on at this TCT. Terrific. I thank you for your time and I want to remind everybody that we have a variety of uh, TCT coverage between Jack and Jack Interventions and just general coverage of the meeting at Cardiosource World News where I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.